This church was supposed to be a refuge, a, a place of kindness, love. We, we embrace, accept, love everyone. It's not, it, uh, that was not my experience at all. Tonight, that man is suing a Carrollton church, claiming leaders did not pay attention to his allegations of sexual abuse against a minister. And in fact, that's where we're going to begin tonight. I'm Doug Dunbar. I'm Nicole, Ber Nicole Baker. The minister was sent to prison eight years ago for sexually abusing Luis Vasquez and a relative. The minister also worked at the apartment complex where Vasquez lived. Before we start with this story, just fair warning, parts of the story may be tough to listen to you and for tough to see as well. Our Marvin Hurst tonight, though, with the graphic details in a story that you'll see only here on CBS News Texas. September 13th, 2014, a 22-year-old man who had been in therapy came here to the Carrollton Police Department. He was coming to report a grown man who had been sexually abusing him for years. More times, he told police, than he could count. There are memories of Ministerial Spithania USA that get praise from Luis Vasquez. It was nice when I would sit with my mom on a Sunday service. Um, it was really nice when um, we would serve together as a family. These days, the 32-year-old is sitting with his attorney. The outcome, he says, of failed faith in the church. So do I want anything to do with church? No, never again. He says his family lived about eight miles from the church in this apartment complex in Carrollton. He was 10 years old. As he recalls, they met their go-to spiritual leader at church. But Julio Pineda's governance started to make him feel uncomfortable. How I felt as a child, I was confused. I didn't understand why I, I didn't even understand that I was being controlled. I didn't understand that I was being groomed. I didn't understand that the lifestyle that I was growing in was more of a cult and less of, of believing in faith. Denton County investigators say Pineda was a maintenance technician where Vasquez, his mother, and a young relative lived. His mother, according to Vasquez, had left an abusive relationship and worked hard to support apartment 2307. And while she was away, Vasquez says the man started giving him condom lessons and pornography. You're talking about the condom and the pornography. Is this just educational as in him speaking it out to you? Hey, he, this is how it is. Here's the diagram. No, uns no, no, no. This isn't this isn't like in school where you have your parents sign like, hey, this is the th this is everything that we're going to be going through. It's nothing like that. This is we're talking about I'm coming home from school. He, he, uh, he follows in after me because he knows what time I get home. My mom's working until like midnight, my is still in school. And he's unzipping, he's unzipping his pants and, and uh, with an erection and he's showing me. Arrest affidavits obtained by CBS News Texas reveal the family considered Julio Pineda like an uncle. But Uncle Julio turned access into crime. I hadn't even reached 18 and I had already, was already sexually active in sixth grade fully sexually active in sixth grade. How many times did this happen, Louis? Oh my gosh. Um, I remember the, the detective asked me that, and I remember it was such a weird question for me, because I'm like, what are you talking about? He, f he raped me almost every day, and if it wasn't rape, it was oral sex, and if it wasn't oral sex, it was something else. So like, I, I can't tell you the exact number, but let's make it Sunday through Friday, because at least Saturdays, my mom was home all day because she didn't have to work. Court documents show Carrollton police determined he was abused from 11 to 16 years old. He and his attorney say it was actually from ages 10 to 17. And here's why. The affidavit says a detective asked Vasquez to provide her specific details, which distinctively stood out in his mind as more traumatizing than others. The document says he was able to give the detective multiple incidents. Now, per that affidavit, the detective selected seven offenses to document and charge Julio Pineda. I feel really embarrassed to say this, but I didn't have an understanding that I was raped until I was in like my mid-20s. It wasn't until I started going to therapy and I had a full understanding that I was abused. So investigators focused on incidents at the apartment complex from 2005 through 2009, where Pineda had a master key. 
Police say the man would take the young boy to the complex's model apartment for some of these acts. Others, they say, he would just walk into the boy's bedroom and that of another young relative. It's very difficult to explain the amount of fear that, that was almost born the day that I was abused and that grew for a long time and that fear paralyzed me. Pineda was arrested and indicted on charges of aggravated sexual assault of a child, sexual assault of a child, and indecency with child sexual contact. I thought rape was hard, but telling my mom was just as difficult. He got a plea deal. For two victims, prosecutors say he had to serve eight years per count concurrently for two counts of aggravated sexual assault of a child, a count of sexual assault of a child, and an indecency charge with credit for time served. And this isn't just about money. This is about holding abusers accountable and holding people accountable for not speaking out when they were confronted with these facts of abuse. That brings us back to the attorney. Vasquez is suing Ministerio Spitania and its head pastor for not acting on his outcry. And part of that process uh, will be sort of uncovering the veil of secrecy that we believe surrounds this church. Uh, we know there have been multiple instances of abuse at this church. Blair Melmazi is talking about the arrest of Luis Escobar and Alvaro Jimenez. The men entered a guilty plea in this particular case. Escobar got deported. Jimenez is still in prison. So this is an unrelated case that happened more than two years ago. The men were arrested at the church after a 14-year-old student made an outcry about sexual assault. Officials say the alleged incidents in this case did not happen at the church, but Vasquez says some of his abuse did. And on church property. On church property, um, at his home in Carrollton, the home he had in Frisco. Um, it also occurred in Carrollton at the apartment complex where I lived. It also, it, it occurred in the church uh, bathrooms. And there's, uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Ministerios Britannia. When you, at the back of the building, there's two uh, sanctuary, or, or I don't know what they're called. Uh, in, in Spanish, it's san, santuario, so in English, I'm sanctuary. One arrest affidavit mentions the victim recalled, quote, it being a Thursday night due to Julio wearing a suit, end quote. It also says, quote, Julio preached at their church on Thursday nights, and it was the only time he wore a suit. End quote. Police say he was violated that night after Pineda left service. There was one time where he preached a, a service. The service was still going on, and the worship team then picked up playing instruments. He took me to his car. Um, he had me perform oral sex, and then we went right back into the uh, to the building, and then he wrapped up the service. Padre, por favor, enriquece tu palabra en nuestros corazones. Father, please enrich your word in our hearts. The 32-year-old says his youth pastor got him a meeting with Victor Iguero Sr. after he mustered up enough courage to say something. I see where you told the youth pastor, and that's what you kind of mentioned. I had more fear for Julio Pineda and Victor Yeros, Like, I was more scared of them than I was of being raped. The sexual assault survivor and his attorney say that meeting with the Garros ended with a young Vasquez getting put on punishment. So I tried to talk to the man who's in charge about the allegations in this lawsuit. Dr. Victor Igueros tells me that he'd love to speak about the allegations, but his legal team has told him to keep quiet. CBS News Texas also sent a letter to Julio Pineda to get his side of the story. So far, no word back from him. According to the state of Texas, he is a sexually violent predator, too dangerous to be released. So he was committed under Chapter 841 of the state's Health and Safety Code, designed explicitly for involuntary and long-term treatment. Pineda has been at this facility in Littlefield since February 27, 2020, and he will be there unless a court releases him. It's sexual abuse and it's wrong and it's a crime and people need to be held accountable. In the meantime, Luis Vasquez says he is no longer a voiceless victim. It will be up to a court to decide if his words merit compensation from the same church where he once found praise. This church was supposed to be a refuge, a, a place of kindness, love. We, we embrace, accept, love everyone. It's not, it, uh, that was not my experience at all. Marvin Hurst, CBS News, Texas.